it's Paul Hamilton here. Let's take a look at Reality Composer. Now, just getting orientated with Reality Composer to start with, if we go to the App Store and see where it actually is, we'll do a little search. And let's do a little search for Reality Composer. And the icon looks like this over here. Uh, you can see I've already got it because it has open. Uh, now, just a little bit of a warning. Uh, you'll need a relatively newer iPad, generation iPad to actually use this. It also works on iPad Pro and your iPhone as well. So if you've got your iPhone, that's great. Um, so you can actually get it from the App Store. If it doesn't come up, it could be because you've got an older generation iPad. So just be aware of that. So let's open up and let's just have a really quick look and get orientated with Reality Composer. So you can see here, it's opened my locations. So I'm just going to my, on my iPad. I can go to my recent items that I've been playing with with Reality Composer, but I'll go back to Browse. I'll go on to on my iPad and I'll just hit the plus. We know the plus symbol is the kind of a generic symbol for adding a new project or content on an iPad. Now the first page that you'll actually uh, be faced with is this one here. So you'll be choosing an anchor. So this is basically where the augmented reality is stationed or seen. So if it's on the ground, it's going to be horizontal. If it's on a wall, uh, later on we might be doing something like a, a marble run or some AR artwork we might place on the wall so that it'd be vertical. We can anchor it to an image so it actually recognizes the image and places different uh, 3D assets on the image itself. Face, well you need actually a iPad Pro or uh, an iPhone that actually has a true depth camera for that to actually work. Um, and right down the bottom there you'll see that we can actually with some of the newer devices we can actually scan objects and actually connect and anchor AR objects to objects as well. But today we're just going to get started and we're going to have a look at something on the ground so we'll choose horizontal. To be honest 90% 95% of your AR experiences are probably going to be horizontal because they'll be placed on a floor plane going forward. So let's select that. And you can see here it does a couple of things. Now if I could just talk about really briefly uh, the way that we navigate around AR. So you can see right at the top here, it's opened my properties uh, panel or my menu down the side. So I'm just going to tap on that and get rid of it. And I normally use two fingers. So when I'm on my iPad and I'm actually looking at Reality Composer, I'm using a two finger pinch and I can rotate and I can do a range of different things. If I do want to look at it from a bird's eye view, I'm going to do one finger and I'm going to drag just one finger drag down my page. And you can see there that I can go from underneath my object or on top of it. Uh, but normally I'll be using my two finger pinch and that allows me to navigate around my object really, really easily. And to be honest, everyone, that's incredibly important because when we're placing objects, we need to be able to navigate around our scene to be able to place them in the right spots. So I'm just going to tap on my cube and I'm going to delete. You can see a couple of options come up. I can modify, duplicate, duplicate, copy and cut and so forth. I'm just going to delete that one. And I'm going to click on my little default text here and delete that as well. So now you can see my circle, which is a great place in the middle of my scene to place my objects. And I'm going to have a look at this first tab at the top here, which is my add a 3D object. Now, when I press on that, you'll see some different options. I can actually import a 3D model at the top. We'll look at that a little bit later. We won't look at that in this tutorial, but I can definitely add some pretty cool shapes. So let's add, um, we might add the cube again and we just press on it once. Now you can see here that that's added uh, the cube to my scene, which is great. If I click on it, I've got those options again. But what I can do is if I go up to that original panel that came up, which is my properties panel, I can do a few things with it. I can position it and rotate it. I can scale that up and down. I can change the materials. I can even change the colors as well. So you can see here that I've got different colors that I can actually use. And I've got some different textures and different things as well. So we might leave that at blue. Down the bottom, we can increase the width. So we can actually go over here and increase the width of our object and change the kind of the shape of it, our height, our depth, and our bevel radius, which means kind of our rounded edges, which is pretty great. 
And we can also apply some physics. We're not going to look at that in this orientation, but we can look at that a little bit later. You'll also know if I actually tap on my properties and get rid of that panel, you'll notice that when I tapped on my object here, I've got these panels. The first one's green and we've got red, which is basically our X, Y, and Z. And we can actually move our object in regard to those kind of three different orientations like that. You'll also notice that when I click on the green, for example, I've got this circle. And what I can do is I can actually rotate. If I actually put my finger on it and drag it, that allows me to rotate my object. If I hit my red, if I hit the red arrow here, and I rotate, you can actually see that that's changing that orientation. And if I go with blue, you can see that I can rotate that as well. So that gives me all of the different controls to modify my object, as well as also kind of raising it and moving it around my page as well. So that's kind of the properties, but also looking at how we can move X, Y, and Z, and actually have a look at a few things. The play button at the top allows me to actually view the scene without the edit mode. So it's kind of like a preview. The AR is obviously, obviously where I can actually load that in the real world and actually place my object around my room or wherever I'm situated. We've got a couple of things here. We've got our different um, sides. So you can actually ma manipulate certain sides. So that is where you can grab each of those kind of faces and manipulate those. We've got our snapping at the top here. Snapping is incredibly good in regard to being able to kind of hit the ground and leave it there. But if I want to be extra, extra careful and accurate with my placement of my object, sometimes I turn off my snapping so that I've got a little bit more control. Here is where I can actually frame my scene. So that's looking at the whole scene overall, depending on how many objects I've got on it. And I can also frame the selected item as well. So just kind of, it really does come in handy when you've got lots of objects in your scene going forward. Here I've got my undo button, so that gets rid of the last mistake, obviously one of my most important things there. And finally, I've got my scenes. At the moment, we've only got one scene, but we can actually have increased scenes. And we can have things like if I uh, get close to a certain object, it actually goes into another scene, which could be good for a little portal, um, a portal project that we'll be working on later. Um, across here, we've got some other things as well. We've got our behaviors. We'll look at that later on when we get a little bit more advanced and have a look at how we can make things move and interact with each other, uh, which is great. And we've got our three dots here where we can go a little bit, for, uh, we can do some more extension type activities like exporting our USDZ file and doing some other things as well. So that's just a really brief overview of Reality Composer and getting started. Have a little bit of a play. Um, add some objects, manipulate them, change them, uh, raise them up, uh, turn them around in regard to rotating them, and just get really familiar with being able to use that two finger pinch to rotate around the back of your objects, around the sides of your objects, because that's going to make it incredibly, um, well, it's going to make it more easy. Uh, it's going to make it easier for you to navigate and place objects and be more accurate if you can actually kind of move around your virtual environment going forward. So I hope you found that useful. Um, please have a look at each of those different tabs at the top and have a look at those panels. Have a really good play with um, your actual objects and the properties down the side. And I will see you soon for our next couple of tutorials. Paul Hamilton here signing off.